Hey everybody. So for today's little video, I'm gonna be going through the time and the expenses that I had on that project so far. There's been quite a few of you guys asking about this, so I'm gonna go over those things real quick. So um, for the beginning of the video, or beginning of the videos, um, I did the six hours of cleaning. Uh, that's pressure washing, putting in like a little water and bleach compound, and then pressure washing again. So that's about six hours. Uh, doing that because I also got to get all like the sticker bushes out of the, out of the boat. It was pretty rough shape. Get all the dirt, grime, leaves, all that crap out of there. So um, six hours in that. Eight hours on the demo. That's removing cabinets. That's removing the sink, the stove, um, the bench, the table, all that, all the seat cushions, um, the fresh water holding tank up underneath the, uh, the bench area on the uh, port side. So that was eight hours. Uh, four and a half hours to remove the engine, uh, the uh, transom bracket, the gimbal, and the outdrive. Um, it was probably closer to five after like picking up tools and all that stuff. But uh, it took about nine hours for the floor to be removed. Um, this is because I was using the oscillating tool, and I was getting right against the side of the hole, so there's gonna be minimal sanding. Um, a lot of people are like, well, there's a lot better tools you could use. Yeah, there is, but at the at the long run, you're gonna be coming back, either having to sand, trim it down a little bit just to get down to the side so you can lay glass down, put the floor in or whatever. So that's what I did because I feel like that's more time effective because you're gonna to have to come back eventually, but there probably is a, a correct tool, but I'm not gonna go out and spend a tool, spend money on a tool that I have something related that I could use. So um, this isn't a bid job, so this is pretty much just my time and I'd rather not have to spend the extra money to buy a tool that might save me an hour, maybe or two. Um, I'm just trying to be more cost effective and I could put that money towards saving it for Kusa board, putting it towards the motors, whatever. Um, that's just what I did, so. Um, and then four and a half hours for the uh, three and a half feet of stringers I removed in the back to be able to access the transom. Uh, you, some people like to remove it all at once uh, people like to use bracing that type of stuff I don't really want to have all this bracing all over the floor or on the exterior of the boat going through the gel coat and then having a patch at the end so um, this is what I'm gonna be doing removing the part of the stringers in the back so I can get the transom get the transom fixed with the crucible board glass it in and then start working on individual stringers because um, I don't really want to have that warping effect uh, you probably won't but it's something I, I I kind of worry about because there's not much holding it together when everything's taken out of the boat because literally there's it's pretty much a skeleton right now so um if you guys are just removing a couple things here and there that's fine your boat would probably stay stable depending on the boat but um it's pretty much just windows in the back part of the cab that pretty much keep this thing square so um this is what my plan is doing it you guys can do it your way but this is the way i'm doing it so and then uh two and a half hours for cutting that little uh, the edge around the transom and also that little patch hole that I used to see if the actual transom was wrong. Um, there's a lot of prying and stuff like that to get that glass off so I'm making that for this cutting out video. Um, so two and a half hours to really do that go around the border and then cut out that patch to see if the transom was indeed rotten which it was. If you guys haven't seen that go back to the uh, last video you can check that out. Three and a half hours to remove all the windows get the seals out get that type of stuff done. Um, rear windows and also, I think, I don't know if I put in the time to remove the, the brackets and stuff for that, but three and a half hours, rough, rough estimate, so. And then we also got like, we got like three hours for the um, like garbage dumps, runs, like getting that type of stuff, like clean out the boat throughout these projects in between areas I'm working on, so. Hey, Math, I'm working. Hold on a second, okay, buddy. So. Um, and then I got the side gunnels. So that's where like the storage, like where your downrigger balls, like you put like um, your plugs or whatever you want to put on the side of the boat in the back on the deck area. Um, I cut that off with a skill saw, not skill saw, but a saw saw the first time. And then went back through with an oscillating tool on the port side. Um, I feel like the oscillating tool is the better way to go. Like I said, it gets really close to the side of the hole and you just get a nice clean job, very minimal sanding. So, uh, so that's a total of 45 hours. And then if you want to add in the seven hours of foam removal I spent, um, you can do it a lot faster with different tools. People have mentioned knives. You could use a bunch of necessity tools. But for me, I wanted to piece it out so I could put it into trash bags easier uh, to clean up 
is a little bit easier for me for what I'm doing. So that's just what I'm doing, but I didn't put that into the bidded hours because seven hours is the long time. And also a lot of these boats don't have the foam in between the stringers from eight to four. So that's really depending on each project. So that'd be about 52 hours if you really get down to it. So 52 hours with the foam and I think 45 without. So now the tools. Um, I've had a majority of these tools, so it's not a big expense for me, but if you're starting out, it probably could be. But I have um, a lot of these tools. I'm a diesel mechanic, so I've had these tools previously, and I don't really need to go out and buy it, but you could buy some decent tools at like Harbor Freight or Home Depot or wherever. So you guys can do what you guys want, and these prices can change depending if you want to buy a great brand, great tool, or whatever. So you guys can decide what you do, but this is just what I did. I spent 140 bucks on the oscillating tool. That's just the tool, only no battery. And then also I built, I bought a uh, skill saw. I haven't quite used a skill saw yet. I've used it like here and there, but um, this is just kind of like my personal thing I could use down the future. So I bought it while I was on sale and now it's 140 bucks. And it's a great, it's on a worm drive. It's just a standard left-handed side blade. So I can put all these links in the description if you guys want to check those out. And then, um, People have been asking about the blades. I've only used two blades on this entire project with the oscillating tool. They're titanium blades. They're a little bit slower cutting, but they last forever. I mean, I am very impressed with these things. There's uh, bimetal blades you could use, but these are titanium blades. I think for like a four pack was like 20 bucks on Amazon. I have the link down in the description that you guys can check those out, but I got my dad hooked on those. He loves them. And it's, it's just so cost effective. I've only gone through two like i haven't even gone through the second one i'm only about halfway through that second blade so great blades so go check those out if you guys want to um but the biggest thing for me coming up is the cost of the transom so i'm doing kusa board the kusa board is going to be a huge expense but i feel as i'd rather get it done right first time and not have to revisit this in maybe 10 years or 20 years or however long um and then by that time, it's gonna be my boys. And I don't want them to have to go through this. And like, is it worth it? Um, I wanna get it done correct, get it done right, and um, not have to worry about it. And this is the same with the stringer. So Kusa board, three four by eight sheets of one inch. That's what I'm gonna be doing with intermediate mat in between each one. And then about a quarter inch plus of glass on the inside, because the outside is already glass and gel coated. So um, that's the plan for the transom. And for the stringers, the same thing. So um, I haven't quite figured out the width of the uh, four by eight sheets I'm gonna be using for the stringers. I'm probably gonna measure and maybe do a little bit wider for the Kusa board for what was originally in there. And then um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna be bedding the stringers. Um, if you guys don't know what bedding stringers are, it's how it's rested on the, the hole. Um, there's a lot of people saying that you can use like little foam strips. You can like use little uh, pieces to keep that uh, contacting the boat, not having the sitting directly on there, but pull them out, put some glass over it, and be done with it. So um, that's what a living's done. That's what glass ply does the majority of the time. So that's probably what I'm going to end up doing. But I need to do some more research on that before I make the final decision on that. So uh, it's going to be Kusa for transom and the stringers and the back deck for sure. Uh, probably into the cabin as well, but uh, it really depends on the expense part. So I've seen honeycomb parts like honeycomb PVC. I've seen a lot of people come in on about that. I've uh, checked it out. It's a lot cheaper. Um, I just, I'm not, I don't have personal experience with it. So I'd really need to do some research on that before I uh, sway one way or the other, because um, I don't really want to choose something and regret it down the, in the long run. There's a lot of people that recommended it. So it's probably going to be a good option for the inside of the cabin, but for the deck, I'm definitely going to be doing the Kusa board probably, but um, things change. So that's what I'm planning on doing for that. And uh, I'm just going to, do each piece at a time, give little updates through this project. I don't want to go too far ahead, get ahead of myself because things change all the time. Uh, I see different ideas on on things that people post online. Like, oh, I like that idea, but I don't like that part. So I'll take ideas from other people, videos or other people's projects that they're doing or boat manufacturers. I've, I love the look of the Lindell Yachts boats. They're a lot of money. But they have great design it's a lot of money to do it um, sea sport uh, there's a bunch of bunch of boats that i have their designs i really love i don't want to copy it i might change a couple things up 
but um, I'm gonna make this boat the way I want it. Um, I'm not gonna make it for someone else. So this is pretty much just gonna be my personal preference on how I'm gonna put this boat together because in, in the long run, it's gonna be mine, and mine only, and I plan on keeping this in the family. Um, and then the boys will have it when uh, they get old enough. So that's the plan for that. So I will probably end up seeing you guys on the next video where I'm carrying out the transom. I'm working on it this weekend. So that next video will be posted next weekend. So check that out. Um, you guys could put the subscribe button and a little bell. That'd be great. You guys could be alerted for that next video too. So I'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching.